Hello and welcome into the FNN Tuesday Night High School Football Coaches Show live from Struts here in Oxford. I'm Grady Sapp alongside my partner Jim Jacobs and we're back in one of our favorite spots, Struts here in Oxford. Of course, always encourage everybody to come out and enjoy the food, enjoy the the, the, the atmosphere and, of course, the big screen TVs and all your favorite ball games on every night of the week. There's no better place to come and hang out and enjoy sports than right here at Struts. I know, yeah, the food is outstanding. Yeah, absolutely. West, West Wings. West Wings. Check. Check. check already check, yeah. already done. Yes, Fried sir. dill pickles for today. Check. Done. <laughs> Got a good old big glass of sweet tea ready oh, to roll. Oh, uh, yeah. we're, we're, we're all set and ready to go for 90 minutes of high school football and the newspaper guy even made it here this week. He did. He uh, <laughs> he managed to keep up with his keys this week, so he's going to be good to go tonight. He's already here, and guess what he's having? Oh, the egg roll. The Southwest egg roll. Southwest of egg roll, yes. of course. Of course. Yep. Two of them. Yep. Two orders. Our guests are already here for the evening. The uh, Spring Garden Panthers have arrived with Coach Jason Howard. They're right behind us getting ready to have some wings and some food. And, of course, the Lincoln Golden Bears are here as well. Coach Matt Zadecker and uh, a couple of his kids are, have joined us tonight as well as uh, we get ready to bring you uh, high school football. And uh, let's flash back to Friday night. Grady, what stuck out to you? Well, Friday night, I, I, maybe the thing, that, and this was just taking it in firsthand, but Piedmont coming in, uh, two things. Piedmont looks like Piedmont. Ooh. They looked really good. Uh, another Hayes under center that reminded me a lot of the previous Hayes under center. Uh, really very methodical win, uh, very strong defensively again, and I was impressed with their offense and how once the game started, it just never really seemed in doubt once Piedmont got the ball. That struck out to me that they're really good this year, and uh, they're going to be the team to beat in that region. I, I, I just – you, it, it always goes through there, and this year is no exception. The other thing that uh, has struck out or stuck out to me so far this season has been Welburn, how good they've looked, and Weaver, just how far that program is down this year. Yeah. Uh, it, it's definitely been a tough start for for Justin Taylor's kids, no question about that. And uh, they've got Pleasant Valley at home this Friday night, Grady. So, you know, maybe they can take a step in the right direction. Uh, Pleasant Valley. I was a little surprised at Pleasant Valley, to be honest with you. They they didn't show me the the scoring punch that I thought they might be able to to bring bring to the upper tier yeah. of, of of the region. I mean, Piedmont just shut them down. I mean, they just literally shut them down. Yeah, they did. They dominated that football game from start to finish, really. Once they had the 17-play drive, they didn't get any points out of that one, a missed field goal. But after that, the game was never the same. It was it was basically all Piedmont well, from that point on. Pleasant Valley had one chance, and yep. that was the turnover early in the second half. You know, the ball was deep in Piedmont territory, and Pleasant Valley couldn't even convert a first down. Yeah. So, so I mean, and, and after that, the game really was never in doubt. No, it really wasn't. And, so, and, and I'm with you. I mean, uh, Jack Hayes, uh, that's a name you better yeah. write down because you're going to be hearing it for a long time. That young man is a freshman. And I've had people ask me, they say, well, well what makes you say he's he's got that potential? The thing that, that I saw Friday night from him, Grady, that really impressed me was how he could throw those sideline routes. Yes. And the kids were coming back to the ball. I mean, he was throwing to a spot. He wasn't throwing to a receiver. He was throwing to a spot. And they were coming back and getting the football. And as a freshman, that's impressive. Had a lot of poise. And uh, I was impressed with his accuracy, With as you're talking there, with the passing. Very strong arm. But he also has that speed filled physicality I'll yep. describe it as uh, that I remember seeing uh, he's very fast when he, when he breaks out and gets in the open field but he has a very physical style of running that he can lower the head and get you that tough yard or two yards that you need to pick up a first down so very, very reminiscent of his brother yes indeed <laughs> so those who, kind was, of, who was a pretty good little football player yes sir uh, <laughs> and, and the winner hey. the word winner sticks out in my mind P about P him Piedmont for the next two or three years going to be in really good shape. Yes, I mean, they are. Uh, to be the man, you got to beat the man, and i got a feeling they're going to be the, the man yeah, for a while. I think they are. So what about you? What stood out with you last Friday night? Well, uh, you know, Piedmont, <laughs> yeah. first and foremost, I mean, I was really impressed with them. Uh, I can't wait to see what Welburn can do with Randolph County or Piedmont mm -hmm. when that comes later in the year. They get a Saks team, Grady, Friday night that's – I don't know. Well, they they from what I've been told, Tories is done for the year. Wow. I mean, he he's he's out again. 
Um, and and I hate to hear that for that young man because he worked so hard off yeah. that injury to come back. And I'm sure Joe will either confirm or deny that for us because he's he's probably got more insight and has talked to Coach Miller, and I haven't. That what what I what I've heard is street talk, uh, but I've I've been told he's done. Um, so. I think Welburn's got to be the favorite going into the Sacks game, even though it's at Jack Stewart. Uh, Sacks let B.B. Comer put a bunch of points on him Friday. Yeah. That's not reminiscent of a Sacks team. No, it's not. That's true. That so, was a surprising score. Sacks might be the team fighting for fourth. Yeah. To hang on to fourth, which means they're going to have to take care of business against Pleasant Valley and Weaver and maybe even, you know, they've already beaten B.B. Comer. So, you know, as you see who, who our guest lineup is there on the screen. Uh, the other thing, I guess, is, and I mean, it really doesn't have a, well, we'll talk about the, high, the higher end uh, rankings uh, in the state. I don't know that there's a clear-cut 7A favorite right now. I mean, Thompson took out Hoover Friday night and mm -hmm. did it rather convincingly from what I understand. Hoover took out Central Phoenix City, who nobody could beat last year yeah. in the Champions Challenge. So who's the best team in 7A? Is it, is it maybe somebody from South Alabama we haven't seen yet? Uh, that's a possibility. And I tell you, I'm really impressed with Oxford. I can't wait to see what happens when they hook up with Pinson Valley next Friday night. That is going to be a huge football game. Yes, it uh, is. And for a lot of reasons. One, it's, it's one of the humps that Oxford's got to get over if they're going to take that next step to where they want to be. And you got to beat Pinson Valley. you got to beat Clay Chalkwell. Those are the two teams that have, in essence, owned you for – the last number of years and have been your way out the door of the playoffs. So, And I'll tell you, another thing we, we got to talk about if we're talking about things that impress us, Ohatchee. Yeah. Uh, they seem to be arrow-focused on whatever it's going to take to get them back in front of Fife again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and now, frankly, Collinsville may have something to say about that this Friday night. Yeah. They got to go into Fife and play and – uh, that that's going to be a knockdown drag out. I figure Fife's probably going to come away with it, but uh, that's still that's two top ten teams facing off uh, early in the season. Yeah, that'll be a heck of a ball game and a war up there. And and I do think Ohatchee is 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 kind of settled in under Scott Martin that every year they're going to be in contention and and one of these years they're going to win the whole thing. And I personally I hope they get Fife again because I'd like to see that game again. Ooh, me too. Um, uh, I, I mean, really would. Dominique yeah. Thomas is a player of the year candidate. Yeah. There's no question about it. You know, everybody talks about Wiggins again and, and of course, Darian from Hoax Bluff, and, mm -hmm. and they're both in the conversation. But I'm telling you what, you better not count out Dominique Thomas. Oh, no. that, that young man is he, – he's a serious football player. Yes, he is. He is uh, – in the words, a stud. Yeah. I mean, he can, he, can, he can bring it. He does every week. I am also think that uh, if you look at Central Clay County in the start, they've gotten off to the beatdown of uh, Benjamin Russell in the opening week Whew. was really impressive. And, of course, they took care of business against Munford uh, yeah. last week, as you would expect. But I think that is a powerhouse team, again, under Coach Danny Horn down there. And I think this is the year they expected to be good. They were pretty darn good last year. Good enough. Let's well, say they don't have to spec no more. No, because <laughs> no. I think they're pretty good. I think they are. You know, I, th I think we find out all we need to know about them uh, early in October. I think it is when Mortimer Jordan comes to town. And, uh, you know, that's a team that gave them the most trouble last year. Yeah. A team, though, they actually should have beaten twice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No yeah. question. Well, we're going to take a look at our schedule this week coming up. You'll have the, uh, of course, VCW Championship Wrestling coming your way on a Thursday night, Friday night, or Friday at 1 p.m., 50 p.m. You can see last week's game on replay. And, of course, uh, Friday night, you see the Coaches Show replay coming up at 4.55. And, of course, we're live with our FNN Game of the Week. And this week we are going back down to Lincoln and going to get a look at the Golden Bears for the first time this year as they take on the Green Wave from Leeds. Yep, uh, Leeds Green Wave under a new head coach who has – championship pedigree jerry yep. hood i yes, mean sir he knows how to get the job done he he won the state title coach of the year i think in was it 14 or uh something like that yep. at uh clay chalkful mm -hmm. uh but uh 
you know, stepped away from that, and then they they've convinced him to take over at Leeds, and the the Green Wave is 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 one and two, Grady. But that that most recent loss came in double overtime to John Carroll, a five A team uh, out of Birmingham. So uh, you know, I think I think Leeds will will give Lincoln a pretty good game uh, Friday night, and hopefully we'll have another good one uh, for fans to watch starting at six thirty with the Serve Pro countdown to kickoff. Yeah, looking forward to that. We're getting a signal from across the way with our producer telling us it's time to go to break so why don't we grab our first break of the night and then we'll come back and welcome in our first guest of the wings night. wings <laughs> coming up next y'all keep it right here it is the fnn juicy night high school football coaches show live from struts in oxford on the friday night network banking local matters when you keep your money here it stays in the community to support local businesses and schools and farms at First Bank of Alabama, we've been serving this area for more than 160 years. We care about our community and the people who live here. So when you bank here, you make being here better for all of us. First Bank of Alabama, the official bank of here. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Dave Mack for Advantage Tire on Highway 202 in Anniston. Most of you know about the new and used tires and rims we sell. But I bet there's a lot of things we do that you don't know about. We have a full lineup of ASE certified mechanics that are ready to take care of just about everything you can imagine, like this. He's working on a brake job right here. At Advantage Tire, we've got the latest diagnostic tools. These are all digital. This is wireless. Most people have a wired, we got wireless. But on top of that, when it comes to diagnostics, we still handle your alignment with the latest technology available. And don't forget, we do shocks and struts too. So the next time this happens to you, you know where to go. Advantage Tire, Highway 202 Anniston. Hey, this is Coach Chris from Professional Apothecary, and we're your hometown team. We take care of all your pharmacy and medical equipment needs. When it comes to medical supplies, the team at Professional Apothecary has the winning game plan. Everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and doctor comfort shoes. And we have all of your over-the-counter needs. Come see us at Professional Apothecary. Located on North Street, just off the square, on Facebook and online at ProAPO.com. Welcome back to the Tuesday Night High School Football Coaches Show, live from Struts in Oxford. Jim Jacobs here in the middle, Grady Sapp to my right, and to my left, the head football coach of the Spring Garden Panthers, Coach Jason Howard, making the drive down to join us here this evening. Coach, good to see you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank y'all for having us. Well, uh, I see that the the guys are eating behind us. So, uh, have, you, <laughs> ha, have you had yours yet, or did we interrupt it? Uh, y'all interrupted a little bit, but I guess we'll be okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, coach, you're coming in uh, off a, a pretty nice uh, win over the Winterboro Bulldogs. You got took care of business. So, talk a little bit about uh, about this team, where you are so far with the season. I know one and one coming in, but coming off a win, that's got to feel pretty good as you head into the rest of your season. It does. We're we're a really, really young team this year and having to go through some growing pains. We knew we was going to have to do that going into this year. Uh, but they're coming around. They're coming around. We played – I felt like we took a step forward on week two from where we was week one and, you know, just trying to step forward and take a step forward every week is our goal. Well, Coach, in, in the region you're playing in, you got to keep taking those steps because <laughs> yeah. uh, there's not a lot of gimmies. I mean, you guys uh, – I think if I talk to everybody else out there, you guys are the favorites this year in the region, but uh, you got some tough football games still to be played. No, we really do. And, I mean, you know, I think uh, everybody y'all talk to is saying we're the favorites based off the fact that we won it last year, uh, <laughs> not not off the fact of where we're at right now. Uh, I think we got some really good teams in the region. Appalachian's much improved sitting here. I think they're 3-0 and right now. Uh, Donahoe. I mean, I, Donahoe may be one of the best team, or probably the best team in the region, just to be honest with you. And uh, Winterboro's very athletic. Winterboro's probably the most athletic team, you know, in the region. Uh, haven't had a chance to see TCC in victory so far. But, you know, like I said, I have, I do know that Appalachian's got a new coach in. It sounds like he's doing a good job. Got a bunch of kids out. Uh, Raglan's played, you know, Asheville right off the bat big school then turn around and play Donahoe so their record's deceiving coach does a good job down there with Raglan Raglan's always going to have some greedy kids and they're always going to have some real good athletes too in their skill spots but like I said we just our offensive line especially we're, we're real young and we just got to improve every week and if we improve every week uh, we're going to be better down the road I got 
you know, uh, every position pretty much coming back next year. I mean, we're in a unique, unique spot that uh, we got one senior that's, I guess you could say, start, split some time, and then we got one more rolls in. That's it. The rest of us are juniors and tenth graders. As as you kind of run through this region schedule, and there we got we got it up on the screen right there. Uh, you got Donahoe coming up in a couple of weeks. Right. Uh, I know we're going to come up and do the Raglan game. We were able to get that move to a Thursday night late in the year. And, you know, Raglan is a team that seems to always get better near the end of the year for some reason. I don't, I don't, it just kind of seems to go with, with, with their psyche or whatever. But if, if you want to beat them, you better catch them early because by the time it gets to the end of the year, they're, they're, they're pretty <clears throat> tough. Yeah, they really are. I felt like last year as the season went on, they got stronger and stronger, man. They played our tails off. They gave us out of everybody in the region last year. I think Donahoe played us stronger than anybody else did. Closer ball game. You know, we had to come from behind right there. Us and Rag, uh, uh, Donahoe, I'm sorry, Ragland. Uh, Donahoe played us close early in that 16 nothing. but we actually had to come from behind against Ragland last year at their place uh, in order to win that ball game. And like I said, I felt like from seeing them early in the year when they played uh, TCC uh, to the time that we played them, I was like, man, they're they're a lot better. Well, Coach, does it feel, is it is it a different mindset for you this year when you're kind of the team with the target on your back this year? Does that, uh, does that feel a little different for you in, in terms of how you're approaching things, or you just go about your same, go about your business, same approach, and don't pay any attention to, to the favorite label? Ah, we just go about it doing the same thing. I mean, we're not, when we was in there, it was always, a, you know, we went through about four years there where us and Cedar Bluff was one, two, and I mean, it always came down to us and Cedar Bluff, and we always had target on back, and I mean, before we swapped regions, you know, uh, Sir, Sir Bluff beat us three out of the four, but it was always the region championship game. Nobody else was really within about 35, 40 points of us or Cedar Bluff. So we we wore that target for yeah. about three years. Then we came into a new region, and we were sort of the <coughs> underdog. I mean, everybody sort of looked at us, and they had all been in the region together, and we was the new kids on the block. Nobody knew anything about us. And uh, then when and it, it sort of put that bullseye back on our back. But And we talk about it. I mean, when I say that, we talk about, hey, y'all know everybody's going to be gunning for us. We was able to slip up on some teams last year. You know that's not going to happen this year. But it, it really don't affect the way we prepare. We're, we're preparing – Rather, we're going to be two and eight, eight and two, ten and zero, zero and ten. I mean, we, we're going to prepare the same every week anyway. How surprised have you been? How quick Appalachians got out of the gate this year? I mean, everybody kind of expected Donahoe and maybe Winterboro to be contenders at the top, but it looks like Appalachians going to have to be taken pretty serious as well. I think so. I and when you look at Appalachian schedule, winning breeds winning. And the more you win, the more confidence you get. And I really, when you look at their schedule, it, it's backloaded sort of the rougher part of their schedule is on the tail end. I really think they could roll off five or six ball games before they get beat or, you know, before they really get a good challenge. And, you know, uh, once you hit that mark and your kids start believing, because when you go from not winning for a couple of years that they've been in, to win and one of the hardest transitions there is getting the kids to believe hey we can win right and you know when you start rolling off five six wins in a row and the kids start believing hey dude, this could happen yeah, things then, get crazy it don't does it, yeah. it does then all of a sudden yeah. you get these kids that think hey we can't be beat <laughs> that's dangerous because when they think that way it's tough to beat them yeah, yeah. that's true uh I, I heard coaches got some kids out that was walking the halls didn't play the past couple of years and uh I know he's got a lot of numbers just looking at his roster. I mean, I know he's got a lot more out. Uh, and they must be playing playing pretty good to beat TCC the way they beat TC. And I know Coach Mahan down there is really rebuilding. I think he's got about 22 kids. And out of that 22, I think about half of them are seventh, eighth graders. So TC's really in a rebuilding right. phase this year. Uh, so, but like I said, they're Appalachians rolling along, and you know I went and looked at their schedule, and I really think they could roll off five or six in a row. Well, you get Nota Sogo this week, and I don't know that you get a lot farther apart. A, a team, of course, they're having to come to you, which is kind of nice. <laughs> well, no, actually, we got. Oh, go you got to go there. there. Okay, sure I looked at the schedule wrong, so that uh, is a long. Well, you may not have. What happened was last year we were supposed to go there, uh-huh. and their coach messed up on schedule, uh-huh. and he called me up he said coach i messed up we need to come to your place or we're going to be in a bind 
because we're going to have a bunch of road, bunch of road games, the, you know, the next year. And I said, well, I said, that'll, that'll work out. I mean, we was going to be six and four where we had six home, like, you know, six and four where we'd have six this year. But uh, that put us at five and five, so we swapped the dates on it. And I, we didn't do a good job probably getting it out to everybody. There'd been a lot of the skids used okay. as best stuff on that, just like when – Jim and I talked, and we moved that Raglan game to mm-hmm. Thursday. A yeah. bunch of the schedule still has it on Friday and had the Cedar yeah. Bluff game on Thursday <laughs> yeah. and stuff like that. And You know, but uh, like I said, we, we do have to go to them. Uh, I, I like it from the fact that they're very, very talented. Maybe the most talented team we're going to play them in Donahoe will probably be the most talented two on our uh, schedule. And it, it's sort of a playoff-type atmosphere. you got to travel a long way, mm-hmm. and, you know, we cross – in the first round, if we was to be in that 3-4, you know, somebody out of our region is going to have to go to Pickens County, Hubbard Bull, mm-hmm. South Lamar, you mm-hmm. know, Marion County, somewhere yeah. over there where you're going to be on the road for two and a half hours. So we're going to treat it sort of like, okay, guys, it's going to be a playoff-type atmosphere. We're going to have to leave early. We're going to have to do this. And, you know, that way we can look back on it. If, if we have to make a long road trip in the playoffs, we can say, all right, guys, y'all know, y'all know the routine. Yeah. See, these guys are such creatures of habit, aren't they? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they are. They, they, it, it's like we want a routine, you yeah, know. And, it and, is. And, 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 you know, Coach, I, I don't know that as broadcasters we talk about that enough to the average fan out there because with the kids, a routine's a big deal, isn't it? It is a big deal. And let me tell you, as a coach, it absolutely, and I am a creature of habit. And when my routine gets broke, it absolutely drives me crazy. I, it bothers me a lot worse than it bothers kids. I guarantee you, kids are kids are more laid back. Ah, well, it's okay. Somebody tells me, hey, you got to be off field five minutes early. He just throws a monkey wrench into everything. I, I won't. Hey, no, nah, we come off at this time. Yeah, ki- yeah. kids are happy because they're not running. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Today, Brady, let, let me say this about, about Coach Howard. Um, he and I talked back during the summer. I picked up the phone one day, and I well, it might have been, what, early July, Coach? Uh, I, mean, it, it, I think it was for then. I still it, My it, granddaughter was up at Children's, so it would have been in June, yeah. I think. I mean, it, I it, was, it was early mm-hmm. because we were putting our schedule together. Yeah. And, you know, they have been after us to come to Spring Garden for, God, I mean, as long as I can remember. I mean, people, you know, sending us messages mm-hmm. and stuff. You guys need to come up here and do a game. It's a special place. And we would never had a chance to get there. And I, I got the schedule kind of halfway worked out. And I thought, God, man, I, I still don't have Spring Garden, you know, the trip to Spring Garden on the schedule. So I, I got to looking around and I said, you know what? If we could get this Raglan game moved to Thursday, this would work. So I called Coach Howard up, and I said, what's the chances we could do? Yeah. And, and he kind of liked the idea to start with. But, of course, you know, a lot of folks don't realize, Coach, it takes a, it takes a pretty good bit of effort to move a football game off a of Friday night, doesn't it? it? It really does. And, I mean, ours was a unique situation because we was playing at that time Cedar Bluff on Thursday. Right. And we already were playing Sand Rock on a Thursday. Mm-hmm. And I felt like three Thursday night games was just going to be too much. So for us to make it work, <laughs> Cedar Bluff had to agree to move that Thursday night game to a Friday night game. Ragland had to agree because it's they still yeah. got school the next day. That's right. Yeah. You know, so Ragland's administration had to say, hey, we're going to let y'all go up there and play on Thursday anyway. And then, like I said, then just it, it, it takes more than takes more than people think where you just go, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's swap it. But what? but he did. He he dug in there and his administration worked with him and Raglan's worked with us and I mean I can I can honestly say this is a game that got moved for FNN and I hope we have an absolutely humongous audience because we are looking forward to hearing that go garden go chant. <laughs> Wait, are you gonna send the FNN plane to pick me up to get me from Silicon? Helico- hey, from helicopter, Chicago? Yeah. remember. He said last year it was a helicopter. helicopter. Yeah. Not playing helicopter. I got to get from Silicaga to Spring Garden on a Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. Tell him, Coach, there just ain't no easy way. There's not no easy There's way. There's not no easy way. I went down there to Winterboro last week right outside of Silicaga. Trust me, there ain't an easy way. <laughs> well, listen, uh, of course, we're here tonight because we're going to honor one of your players as our player of the week. Talk a little bit about Luke and what he means to your football team and, and, and just the person and player that he is. I mean, he, he comes from a – Great family, of course. His mom was uh, all American at Jack State in softball. His dad played college football at Maryville, so he has a background there of 
you know, college athletics. Uh, at the same time, he's a hardworking kid. He puts he, – he's a dream to coach. I mean, he really is. He puts forth anything you want. He's a leader. The kids I brought – Today are three captains, you know, with him. And Weston Kirk, he got player of the week last year for y'all one time. He's one right. of the captains. Then Riley Kirk, our quarterback. But uh, Luke had a – he had a decent game the other night. I mean, he ended up over 100 yards rushing, played solid defensively. Defensively is one of the things that we ask him to do so much that the average person watching the game don't realize what he did. I mean, he had uh, – recovery of an onside kick, fumble calls, fumble recovery, you know, all little intangible things that he does really, really well. Uh, you know, last year he was some, you know, BRC6 sideline show. He was one a defensive player of the year last year as a 10th grader. Right. So, uh, you know, he he's he does the little things. And I, like I said, a lot of times when you look at the statistics, you think, well, he didn't have that great of a game. But then you go back and you watch film, and he caused absolute chaos because they're sending two or three people at him all the time and yeah. freed other people up. You, you just, you know, you can tell when a kid's having a good game because he's always in frame. He's you always. Know, when yeah. you're looking at the video, that yeah. jersey number's always yeah. in there somewhere. Yeah. And like I said, he, you know, he does a really, really good job of just like I said, the little things that frees other people up. And being a leader, I mean, like I said earlier, we're so young that I lean on these three a lot to give us some leadership, and they're doing a great job of it right now, all three of them, uh, and then they'll be back again with me next year, of course. But uh, senior-wise, you know, I only have one senior that's ever been on the varsity football team before, and he didn't get to play. He's getting to play a little bit, but, you know, we we had one senior. It was all region, all county and everything. Of course, we lost him in a car wreck uh, last spring. Right. And uh, so that left a void there for that leadership role, and Luke and Riley and West and all three of them really have stepped up and filled that, you know, filled that role that, you know, Kobe sort of left whenever, you know, whenever he got killed, and that was – you know, I, I couldn't ask for him to do a better job as far as leadership goes. This has been one of the most fun teams I've probably ever coached. I mean, it, we got good kids that I don't have to worry about doing something wrong. I don't have to stay on them all the time. You know, we've had good players in the past. We've had good teams in the past. I'll be honest with you, Monday through Thursday was a nightmare a lot of times because you was always having to make sure they was doing what they are supposed to do. They wasn't getting in trouble, and you, you just stayed on. This group's not like that. I mean – you know, a lot of times that we laugh, we say you need you need some of the renegades. Every, I mean, you really need them on a football team. You don't mm -hmm. need a whole team full of choir boys because if you get that, that eh, could be might bad. Not, but it might not, might not be, be mean enough. Yeah, it might not be. And yeah. uh, so, but like I said, we got good kids. It's been fun to coach this year. So. Well, Coach, we're going to let you get back to your wings. Hopefully they hadn't gotten too cold on you uh, yeah. while you've sat over here and talked with us. Of course, we're, we're probably going to get a good look at you at Donahoe here in a couple of weeks, and we think that might be one of the, the best 1A games of the year potentially. Yeah. We hope we, hope you, you we can do stay your on part. the film. Yeah, we got to do our part. If we don't do our part, we could get embarrassed that night. I'll tell you what, that's just the truth there. Uh, Coach Sanders does a great job up there, and uh, they're – they're well coached, well fundamental, and like I said, that if we don't do what we're supposed to do, I mean, it could really get ugly. Right. Well, Coach, thanks again for for making the trip down and, and enjoy the rest of your dinner, and uh, we'll get uh, get Luke in here and uh, talk talk to him a couple of minutes and uh, let you guys get on back to up toward the garden. Okay, guys, thank y'all right. for thank having us. We appreciate it. Appreciate we'll, you, Coach. Yes, sir. We'll be back with more from Struts here in Oxford. It's the Tuesday night high school football coaches show here on the Friday Night Network. Stay with us. Griffin Laser Engraving in Lincoln is your authorized local dealer for personalized Yeti products. Get your Yeti customized for your team, a business, or a special event. Your color, graphics, even photos. At Griffin Laser Engraving, we make it the way you want it. Order just one or hundreds, and you'll find the full line of Yeti coolers and accessories on hand, even the hard-to-find items. Nationally recognized, but right here at home in Lincoln, for quality awards, trophies, powder coating, and personalized Yeti items, Griffin Laser Engraving. You've been in an accident, your car needs body work, and you're not having a great day. But things just got better. Wesley Paint and Body Shop in Oxford will take it from here. As soon as you walk through the door, you know you're in a 
friendly, state-of-the-art collision center. With over 100 years of combined professional experience, we offer a 24-hour towing service. It's your choice who repairs your vehicle, and we work with all insurance companies. Wesley's Paint and Body Shop is on 78, right across from Camping World. We're here to make your day a whole lot better. Life happens everywhere, like it never even happened, only happens here. The cleanup and restoration specialists at ServPro. Aniston Auto Trim and Body Shop is your best stop for full-service auto body repair, including all body work and professional painting. They also specialize in complete classic car restoration. When you have an accident, you want it back the way it was, and that's what you get with the team at Aniston Auto Trim. The same is true if you're ready to restore your dream car or a timeless family classic. They work with all major insurance companies and provide free estimates for every job. Come by today and see Stacy Jennings and the gang at Aniston Auto Trim and Body Shop, just up the hill off Quintard on Greenbrier Deer Road. And welcome back to the Tuesday night high school football coaches show. We're live at Struts Wings here in Oxford, home of the best wings in the entire part of the state here. Jim Jacobs along with some three guys from the Spring Garden Panthers. Of course, we've got our player of the week to my immediate left, Luke Welsh. Or is it Walsh? Welsh. Welsh. Welsh, that's right. Welsh. And then a couple of Kirks over here. I guess, yeah, you can see them there in the screen. We got Riley here, right? Yes. Okay, here, Riley. Put that up there where people can hear you. Okay. And then Weston Kirk over there. And you and Easton are brothers, right? Yes, sir. Is that right? Okay. Now, you play what position, Riley? Quarterback. You're the quarterback? So you get to hand the ball off to this horse over uh, here, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that pretty fun? Yes, sir. Okay. And, of course, Luke is our player of the, the week uh, for our last week's performance against the Winterboro Bulldogs. Guys, that was a, a pretty impressive win uh, a long way from home. Yeah, it is. It's a big <laughs> win, big region win. Yeah. Of course, I was talking with uh, Coach Howard just a couple of minutes ago. You know, this region is is it's got a bunch of at least contenders right now. Uh, you got Appalachian that's had a, had it's off to a really good start. Donahoe looks to be really a, a serious contender. Raglan's going to probably come on as the year progresses. Uh, you know, Winterboro, you guys have already slipped in there and got that one, but uh, you, you you can't. You, you can't sleep on anybody. I mean, you you got a, a tough road trip this week uh, with with not a saga. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a long trip, but uh, every night every game's uh, the biggest game and the next game, and uh, we'll go down there and take business. Hopefully, talk talk a little bit uh, about uh, Luke. Talk a little bit about the Winterboro game and 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 your performance in the game. I mean, you had a you had a solid offensive night. Rushed for over a hundred yards. But I'm not sure that maybe your your best performance wasn't on the defensive side of the ball uh, with with the recoveries uh, during the football game that, that were at key moments. Well, I probably could have done a lot better on both sides of the ball. I thought I had a pretty sluggish night. But uh, uh, going into the game, we, we knew they were going to be big and athletic, and they were. And uh, Coach Howard just told us we'll do our fundamentals and everything. We'll get through the game. We'll get the win. And we did. Is there is there any as as you know we talk about the the region schedule and I don't know maybe we can put it back up on the screen here for you, uh, there it is. Are there any of these games, Riley, that that you know kind of in your mind you've got circled? I mean I know Cedar Bluff's a big rivalry game and and that's done now. But what 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 games are you looking forward to most? Yeah, Cedar Bluff it was it was on there, but all, every single game's on there. It, every game is circled on our on our uh, schedule. Luke, what about you? Every game. <laughs> Next every week game. up, huh? Yeah, next <laughs> game is the biggest game. You, you really can't, I, I guess from a, a player's perspective and definitely from a coach's perspective, you can't really look at it, I guess, any other way because if you, if you fumble this week, that just makes the rest of the way that much tougher for you, doesn't it? Yeah, you, I mean, you can't uh, look too much ahead. I mean, you you got to focus a little bit on other teams and watch, but uh, 
you got to make sure you take care of the task at hand. And that's the next game, I mean, every week. So, Well, we're going to get to see you guys – maybe twice this year, maybe even more if, we, if, if, if it's a playoff situation. But I know the, the Donahoe game is on the schedule. And then, of course, we're going to come up for a Thursday night showdown with Raglan that, that's been put together. So tell, tell the fans out there what it's like to play at home at Spring Garden because we've heard so much about the atmosphere there for a home game for, at Spring Garden, but we've never experienced. So tell us what we're in for. Uh, it, it, you're in for one. I mean, everything. everybody's always pumped up, and uh, the crowd's always into it. And we always have a good turnout, even for our small, rather small community. But everybody's pitches in, and everybody's at the game. Yeah. Everybody's there, isn't it? You, oh, could, yeah. you could about clean yes, out sir. every house in town, couldn't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, listen, uh, congratulations on, on, a, on a good start. I mean, I know the, the Cedar Bluff game didn't turn out the way you, you hoped it would, but certainly uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely have our eye on the, the Panthers the rest of the way in, in the region because we think you guys are probably the favorites to, to finish in that first spot and host at home in round one, and then from there, who knows? Hope. I hope so. I hope so, at least. <laughs> All right, you got to hang around a minute. We got okay. a little hardware for you. We're going to grab a quick break. We're going to get Dr. Harrison in here, and uh, we'll come back and do our Player of the Week presentation coming up next here on the Friday Night Network. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Eli Henderson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly support the arts. If you are considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Hi, I'm Dave Mack for Advantage Tire on Highway 202 in Anniston. Most of you know about the new and used tires and rims we sell. But I bet there's a lot of things we do that you don't know about. We have a full lineup of ASE certified mechanics that are ready to take care of just about everything you can imagine, like this. He's working on a brake job right here. At Advantage Tire, we've got the latest diagnostic tools. These are all digital. This is wireless. Most people have a wired. We got wireless. But on top of that, when it comes to diagnostics, we still handle your alignment with the latest technology available. And don't forget, we do shocks and struts too. So the next time this happens to you, you know where to go. Advantage Tire, Highway 202 Anniston. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. <laughs> you know, Welcome back to the Tuesday Night High School Football Coaches Show. We got to not talk about Backstreet Boys concerts <laughs> during the break. <laughs> Joined by Dr. Patrick Harrison of Harrison Sports Chiropractic here in Anniston, as well as uh, the office down in Clay County and up at JSU at Pete Matthews. And, uh, Doc, you get the privilege. I mean, here's the hardware. Wow. Is, uh, you know, we, we're already up to week three, believe it or not. A distinct honor. And do you have any extra of these that where I could, like, put one in my pocket and then give one to the athlete is there a way we could do that one night well we might get you one before the year's over how about that hey i like that you know this you can, really you can be you can be the chiropractor of the year Ooh. does that work through the fnn chiropractor of the yeah year? you can be the fnn chiropractor of the year i think i'd be the first well, yeah, you'd be the first. That's a Might fact. Might even be the last. <laughs> I like well, the way you think. Hey, let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you think, Jim. I like it. Well, oh. well, this is this is this is cool. I mean, I, it as a former athlete, I would have loved to have won anything that looked this nice and this cool. And Luke, we'd like to present this to you: um, the FNN HSC Player of the Week, 
great job, man. Thank you. We're Thank proud you. of you. Thank keep you. keep digging, man. Yes, keep sir. doing it. Yes. Sir. All right, Luke. Well, congratulations and uh, continued success through the rest of the year. Stay healthy and. Uh, We'll see you at Donahoe in a couple of weeks. Yes, sir. All right, Thank good you. deal. Thank, Thank you. you. That is Luke Welsh, our Player of the Week from Spring Garden to Panthers. Dr. Harrison here with us. We'll be back, and we'll get to the Lincoln Golden Bears when we continue with the Tuesday night high school football coaches show here on the Friday Night Network. Welcome to Calhoun County, Alabama, your natural attraction. We have invigorating outdoor activities, amazing cultural sites, mouth-watering food, and southern hospitality, all wrapped into one amazing vacation destination. Whether you're looking for a relaxing overnight getaway or for a one-of-a-kind escapade, Calhoun County boasts an incredible selection of outdoor recreational opportunities. Calhoun County is the natural attraction, centrally located between Atlanta and Birmingham, with plenty of fun and memories waiting to be made. Come to Calhoun County, Alabama, a natural attraction. Forsyth Builders are passionate about what they do. A full-service contracting firm, Forsyth handles a variety of jobs, including industrial, commercial, renovations, and new construction. Forsyth has become a leader in construction management and has constructed or made additions on a number of area businesses like Noble Bank and ABS Business Systems, additions to Aniston's Country Club and f and Bank. Remember to make Forsyth Building Company your first choice for quality construction. You've been in an accident, your car needs bodywork, and you're not having a great day. But things just got better. Wesley Paint and Body Shop in Oxford will take it from here. As soon as you walk through the door, you know you're in a friendly, state-of-the-art collision center. With over 100 years of combined professional experience, we offer a 24-hour towing service. It's your choice who repairs your vehicle, and we work with all insurance companies. Wesley's Paint and Body Shop is on 78 right across from Camping World. We're here to make your day a whole lot better. Transformation, a thorough or dramatic change in appearance. Sure, that's the textbook definition, but it really means we're getting you in the locker room on game day with the new Talladega Garage experience. Come see it for yourself this October. Some people pay a premium to see their heroes work their magic, but at the Talladega Garage experience, you get prime access without the price tag. Spend your weekend watching your team gear up, then go to Gatorade Victory Lane to help them celebrate. Come in today at Big Woody's Tires on Highway 202 in Anniston for a free tire and rim inspection. With over three decades of experience, Big Woody's has new and used tires with the latest and most up-to-date equipment. We specialize in 30-inch wheels and down. If you can't afford new tires, see us for good high-tread used tires at a fraction of the cost. You're born to be a winner. Make your ride safe and look like one, too, with tires and wheels from Big Woody's, where every reasonable price is negotiable. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Eli Henderson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly support the arts. If you are considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Banking local matters. When you keep your money here, it stays in the community to support local businesses and schools and farms. At First Bank of Alabama, we've been serving this area for more than 160 years. We care about our community and the people who live here. So when you bank here, you make being here better for all of us. First Bank of Alabama, the official bank of here. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Aniston Auto Trim and Body Shop is your best stop for full-service auto body repair, including all body work and professional painting. They also specialize in complete classic car restoration. When you have an accident, you want it back the way it was, and that's what you get with the team at Aniston Auto Trim. The same is true if you're ready to restore your dream car or a timeless family classic. They work with all major insurance companies and provide free estimates for every job. Come by today and see Stacy Jennings and the gang at Aniston Auto Trim and Body Shop, just up the hill off Quintard on Greenbrier Deer Road. Forsyth Builders are passionate about what they do. A full-service contracting firm, Forsyth handles a variety of jobs, including industrial, commercial, renovations, and new construction. Forsyth has become a leader in construction management and has constructed or made additions on a number of area businesses like Noble Bank and ABS Business Systems, additions to Aniston's Country Club and f and Bank. 
Remember to make Forsyth Building Company your first choice for quality construction. And welcome back to the Tuesday Night High School Football Coaches Show. We're live here at Strux in Oxford. Already handed out the hardware for Player of the Week to Luke Welsh from Spring Garden. And now pleased to be joined by the Lincoln Golden Bears head coach, Matt Zadecker, our Well, one of our nominees for FNN's Coach of the Year last season. But, Coach, that ain't nothing but a memory. That's it. <laughs> it's, time that's, to, that's it. it's time to look at things completely different now, isn't it? That's right. It's new season and uh, – you know, I, I guess in the coaching business, you, you you can't hang on to things too long. You got to always be next man, next play. You better, <laughs> you better be a year ahead and uh, and be looking in the future at all times. So uh, yeah, last year was a great year, but uh, it's a new season, it's a new team, and uh, you know we're, we're we're plugging along. How do you like your team so far this year? And 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 tell me tell me what you've seen that uh, that you feel good about and maybe some things that that you'd like to see improve over the next few games well you know we played two games and we had an off week last week and I, I, I don't think we've played a complete game yet you know I think uh, we put a really good half together against Southside offensively and then uh, then we kind of fell off the second half and defense played really good I think last uh, the week after that um, offensively we were lights out scored a lot of points defensively we couldn't stop anything so uh you know, we had an off week this past uh, last week and really had some soul searching going on and try to figure out how we can put four complete quarters together. And once we get that going, uh, we'll, 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 be, we'll be pretty good. If how do, you, how do you like the off week after playing a couple of times? I mean, to me, that's a, that's a little on the strange side. I mean, I, you obviously uh, the schedule stuff is done probably long before you got there. But, uh, I mean, how do you, how do you like the, the idea of playing a couple of weeks or two or three weeks and then having that off week? Well, for us, we came off of two very physical games. You yeah. know, a, a, a overtime game against Southside, and then Wilburn's always a slobber knocker. So it was a good time for us. It was a good time before we go into region play, um, really refocus the season and, and understand that, you know, those two games were good to get us going, but now it's, it's region time. These are games that count for playoffs. And, uh, and, and coming off having a break when you have the Labor Day weekend as well, you don't have to worry so much about getting kids there on a Monday when you're out of school. And so it gives them a, a, a good little long weekend right there. And then you just regroup. You go back to technique. You go back. You start fine-tuning. And then it's always nice to have two weeks to get ready for your region opponent, first region opponent. Your region is still a little bit of a mystery, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Hanley handled Holtville. Mm-hmm. Childersburg, not too sure about them yet. Uh, not too sure about Talladega right now. Right. Uh, you know, it, and, and of course, you guys are, you haven't played a region game yet. You got leads with coach, you know, new yeah. coach over there who is obviously knows what he's doing. Absolutely. Uh, so, I mean, it may not come this year, but it'll eventually come with no, Jerry yeah. Hood over there, I no think. Doubt. You know, so, Hall of Famer, you know, uh, yeah. over 100 wins and, uh, and it is. It's kind of, uh, you know, with him and Coach Felder coming in, two new coaches in, in, the, in the region. And uh, so it's kind of the unknown right now. But, uh, you know, I feel like everybody in our region got better. If you just look at their roster from last year to this year, I think uh, it's still a very tough region. It's just, you know, it's up for grabs. I think anybody has a chance to win it right at this point. How do you coach right now? I mean, is it all about you? I mean, the, your team? I mean, because really – like you said, there's so much that's changed about the teams that are in the region that you have to play right now, and there's not a lot of film to see on them. To, there's not. To, yeah, and listen, your focus has to be on yourself. It I has mean, to be on That's our the team. thing you can control. That's it. And, you know, we, we can do what we do. If we do that well, things will take care of themselves. Um, you know, obviously you got a game plan at this early point in the season. Um, we don't have that much film. So we focus really a lot on execution, you know, how we want to run our offense, how we want to attack with our defense. And then whatever the opponent throws at us, we feel like we got checks and balances to make sure we do what we do. So it is uh, early in the season, that's part of it. It's, it's getting yourself ready until you get some more game film. You see, you know, how teams are attacking and, and defending you. Do you worry more about what you do on defense or offense right now? I mean, I, I know, and and don't say both, because <laughs> I mean, I I know you got to score enough points, but sure. What what most people that know football will tell you that defense wins championships, right? Because if the other guy can't score, maybe you can score enough. That's you know, right. that's right. <laughs> uh, but as a, and I, I know you're a defensive guy, yeah. so. 
is, is that kind of where you, you really try to hunker down on the kids when, when they're maybe not doing it exactly the way you'd like to see it done? Well, these past two weeks we definitely have. You know, we didn't stop Welburn at all. Uh, when you give up 61 points, you better put some emphasis on your defense. <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, we've really focused in on that. And it's just kind of – it's fine-tuning. we got a lot of returning players, but we haven't really – hit that gel yet. We haven't really found our niche, how we how we how we how we gel together, how we play together on the field. And so that was a lot of it this past week. Um, you know, getting ready for us. And then now we start fine tuning with leads coming in. And look, they're a very talented team. They're putting up thirty plus points in the last two games. Um, Coach Hood again, I mean, you know, my board is filled with about forty different formations that he's thrown out in three in three games. And so it's a lot to get ready for him, but we better be ready for ourselves to make sure that, that we can defend somebody. And then, um, you know, offensively, we put up some points too. So, yeah, the emphasis has definitely been on defense these last two weeks. I like what I saw in your team's ability to throw the football in the spring game. Now, I haven't seen you play this year yet, but yes. we get to do that Friday night with Leeds. But right. I, it, it seemed like to me that, you guys could kind of do, and I mean, Javion didn't even play in the spring game. Right. So, yeah. uh, I mean, everybody thinks he's one of the best quarterbacks in the area. Um, from from a physical standpoint, from throwing the ball and, and you know, even being able to do the RPO stuff. Sure. Uh, talk a little bit about your offense and, and the things you like to do and, and, and how, you, how you approach this game with leads. I mean, you know, gosh, I guess you score as much as you can. That's it. You, you know. know, as long as you got one more than them in the game, <laughs> that's what we want. But listen, Javion's done a really good job this summer honing in the skills. I had him all summer. We uh, went to several different passing camps. We actually won the Northeastern Alabama passing camp. So we've put a lot of emphasis. Coach Hills, our offensive coordinator, has put a lot of emphasis on working our passing game because we got a tremendous athlete out there that can, that can tuck the ball and run at any time. Last week he threw for five touchdown passes, over 250 yards passing. So, uh, you know, that showed up. And so now if we get our running game complementing his passing skills right now along with his athletic ability, uh, our offense should be really good. Really good. So far, what have you seen in the region? Who 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 are the horses? Hanley, Hanley I mean, from the get go. Yeah. yeah, Hanley's got studs all over the field. They got a lot of college recruit type kids. Uh, you know, he was. We caught them at a good time last year off a very tough game. Um, but he's got a tremendous running back. He's got a tremendous defensive end. Uh, Alabama type kid um, he's got just about everybody back that he had last year so I say they're at the top right there and then uh, you know I've seen Elmore County and Leeds I went and watched them last week both put a lot of points on the board um, and then you know Talladega is going to sling it all over the place uh, Coach Felder uh, does a really good job with that spread offense that he runs and they're always a hard hitting defense and then uh, Childersburg again is kind of the, the team that's kind of the unknown. They they came out the gate really strong their first two games, and then uh, and then got in a dog fight with Talladega on the road, and, and Talladega came out on top. So you know I think Hanley's very good right there, and then Hopeful's got a D1 quarterback. You know getting getting recruited by Memphis and other guys. So um, it's a strong region. You know it, it's it to me it strikes me as one of these regions where. You can kind of, you know, run run the gamut, do what you're supposed to do, and then all of a sudden you have one of them uh-oh nights. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. because there's there's always one of those teams that right. could jump up and bite you if you don't come 110% ready to play. Absolutely. Well, and, and you know, Hopeful was that team last yeah, year. Yeah, got you <laughs> last year. Got me last year, and they got in the playoffs, and, you know, they, they probably weren't thought about much, but, you know, going into that place is a tough place to play. I think they were undefeated at home last year, so uh, – it's it's a region where any given night, if you don't bring your A game and if you're off, any team can win. So, uh, you know that's that's the nature of the business, and and I like that. I like being in a region where you have to come every Friday night to have an opportunity to try to win it. It only it it can only make your team better for the playoffs. Absolutely, there's no there's no cupcakes on our schedule. The region's tough, and then you can throw a Mumford in, which is a big rivalry game week five, and then you got a Mono Valley team in week ten that's got you know a power five receiver who's yeah. committed to Auburn. You yeah, know? He, so, I mean, he, he, he he's mean good. He is, yeah. <laughs> he, he's he's something special. Yeah, he sure is. No no question about that. And. Of course, uh, Coach Wilcox does a good job with those Absolutely. kids. Absolutely, he does. He says, you've got a tough schedule. There's no question about that. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, the schedule doesn't favor you this year in that if you are 
to have to beat Hanley to win it, you're going to have to do it there. We are, and, and we kind of put a major emphasis on that in our summer workout program. We knew our schedule last year set up where our toughest games were at home. Now, this year, you know, we've kind of made that our mantra. we got to be road warriors. You know, uh, we have to be able to go on the road in hostile environments with the top-tier te- top teams in our region. we got to be able to sneak out victories. You know, we got to get in there, do what we do, and try to come out on, uh, with wins on the road. And uh, so that's a big emphasis. You got to take care of home field, and if you can sneak, you know, two or three out on the road, then you got a good shot at winning this region. Yeah, I think you're right. No mm-hmm. question about it. But it all starts at home. You Absolutely. Got, you, you got to protect the home court. Well, that's it. And I tell you what, you know, Leeds has a very special running back at number four. He he went for five touchdowns last last week, 246 yards. Flipped on the defensive side, had nine solo tackles. So he is something that we're going to have to contain. I mean, he 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 at a step. He's full speed. He's very slippery, and uh, he's a heck of an athlete. So uh, we got our hands full this week. Um, that's an all-star coaching staff over there, Hall of Fame type coach. Yeah. You know, talked to Coach Hood today. He's a heck of a fella, and, uh, and so and, we and, know we better not look ahead anywhere. We better take care of Leeds and bring yeah. our A game. Well, Leeds is Leeds may be one of those dangerous teams Absolutely. in the region this year mm-hmm. because, like I said, at some point they'll be back. I think to where where they have been in the past. It yeah. may not be this year, but they will hurt somebody's feelings this year. I'll bet Absolutely. you before it's over with. And you just need to make sure it's not your guys' Friday that's night. That's right. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. That's what we tell these kids. The Leeds kids are used to winning. Yeah. You know, there's four state championships on their school board. You know, they have that tradition. And we know that every game they've played in, even their first game, they got beat by Silicaga. They were in it till till halfway through the fourth quarter. There's no quit in this Leeds team. They were down two touchdowns against Elmore last week with about eight minutes to go in the fourth quarter, and they found a way to win. So if we don't come for four quarters, we're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Well, we look forward to showing it to everybody Friday yeah. night starting at 6.30 with the Serve Pro Countdown to kick off, and we hope you'll join us for that. Coach, we're going to talk to Javion and Cam and yeah. let you get back to finishing up supper, and thanks again for, for coming over and visiting with us this evening about the game and the rest of the season, and, of course, we look forward to the hospitality we always enjoy over there on Friday night. Well, we appreciate all you do for us, Jim, and all the exposure you give these young men in our community. So we look Thank forward to seeing you on Friday. Thank you, Coach. Good all deal. Right. We'll take another break. We'll get uh, Javion and Cam in here and we'll be back with more from Struts in Oxford. It's the Tuesday night high school football coaches show on the Friday night network. Professional Apothecary has been the Talladega area's trusted hometown pharmacy for generations. We can meet all your prescription and insurance needs. Plus, you'll find all the basic over-the-counter medications. There's a full line of support hose, and don't forget to check out our Dollar Saver Shelf. When it comes to medical supplies, Professional Apothecary has you covered. You'll find everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and a full line of Dr. Comfort shoes. Thank you for shopping at Professional Apothecary. Just off the square in Talladega. Life happens everywhere, like it never even happened, only happens here. The cleanup and restoration specialists at ServPro. Transformation, a thorough or dramatic change in appearance. Sure, that's the textbook definition, but it really means we're getting you in the locker room on game day with the new Talladega Garage experience. Come see it for yourself this October. Some people pay a premium to see their heroes work their magic, but at the Talladega Garage Experience, you get prime access without the price tag. Spend your weekend watching your team gear up, then go to Gatorade Victory Lane to help them celebrate. You've been in an accident. Your car needs body work, and you're not having a great day. But things just got better. Wesley Paint and Body Shop in Oxford will take it from here. As soon as you walk through the door, you know you're in a friendly, state-of-the-art collision center. With over 100 years of combined professional experience, we offer a 24-hour towing service. It's your choice who repairs your vehicle, and we work with all insurance companies. Wesley's Paint and Body Shop is on 78 right across from Camping World. We're here to make your day a whole lot better.
And welcome back to the Tuesday Night High School Football Coaches Show here at Struts in Oxford. Jim Jacobs, uh, I don't know where Grady got off to, but he... <laughs> <laughs> He's been doing something. But anyway, I've had the pleasure of visiting with all the Lincoln players and coaches, and I got a couple of guys here who are nothing but fun to hang around with. Javion <laughs> Searles, he's the senior quarterback for the Bears, and my man Cam, give me some. There it is. Cam Reynolds also uh, with the Bears, and uh, you guys are one and one on the season. Uh, I'm not even going to ask you what happened with Welburn. Y'all don't want to talk uh, about that, do you? No, we didn't play very good that game. <laughs> you know. But, but, uh, but Wilbur has a good team. Uh -huh. they, they do work, have yeah. they do have a yeah, really good football team. Yes, yep. sir. Sixty one points and uh that that's a big night, isn't it, uh, Javian? Yes, yes, sir. sir. <laughs> it really is. Now, for you, what's this been like so far coming back off the injury? I mean, you've had to rehab, you didn't get to do a lot in the spring. I think that was by design to, to keep you healthy and make sure you were 100 percent when the season started i guess my first question is are you do you feel like you're 100 percent? are you as good as you were before the injury yes sir. i feel healthier than last year yeah yes sir talk about what that process was like i mean mentally you know after the injury and you realized you were hurt and that you know you knew you were going to have to go through some medical things and you know do the rehab i mean how how did that affect you uh it affected me a lot because just sitting there, not knowing that you can't play, but just sitting there, just like, it just broke my heart, for real. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm glad I'm playing now, though. I got back healthier. When you, when you uh, now you got to speak up, just, just, I mean, this thing will pick up, but you got to <laughs> speak up a little bit, okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean, sir. or either I'm going to turn and talk to Cam, because he'll talk for all light. I mean, I'm not I'm worried about yeah, Cam. Cam will, <laughs> Cam will talk forever. Yeah. Uh, but, uh <laughs> You know, I don't. I don't think a lot of people, especially folks that that haven't played and been hurt, Javion, really understand what that's like because you have to go through that period of time where you're not sure. Yes, sir. You know that out. it's ever going to be the way it was. Yes, sir. And 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 to me, that the mental part of all that is probably the toughest part. Yes, sir. It it was tough, but I mean, my mama helped me through it. Coach Z helped me through it. My teammates. I mean, they pushed me through it, and it's good. So now, now you're back ready to do your thing. Oh, yes, five, sir. <laughs> five touchdown passes, that's not too darn bad. <laughs> that's pretty good, any Cam. That's good. We need that, we need that Friday night. All right, you can take a breath. I'm going to talk to him for three minutes. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> how, talk about this team a little bit. How, how good is this team compared to what you guys were able to do last year? Well, you know, coming off of uh, last year's season, uh, we didn't finish like we wanted to, you know. Lost in the first round to uh, Alabama Christian out of uh, Montgomery. So uh, we, we kind of had a chip on our shoulder coming into this season, and um, we want to get better. You know, our senior classes are mostly our starters, and so we want to lead this team in the right way and lead us in the right direction. So coming into this season, we just knew that we had to come back strong. You know, we're going to have a target on our back, being number one in the region. And this week as we go in the region play, I mean, big game, got – and Leeds has some playmakers, number two and number four. We got to stop them in order to win the game. And so, um, this team is a, is a very is a very good team, very talented team. Like last year, very physical team. You know, um, really, really, it's no for us seniors. We're trying to we're trying to build still building that Lincoln brand. You know what I'm saying? Still right. building that brand. Still still trying to keep our, um, everything that we want in in tainable. Like I said, we're one on one right now. Tough game, tough lock, tough lock, tough loss against Welburn, but we still have everything we want in front of us. Still the region championship, ultimate gold state championship, you know, and finish number one in that region. I think that most people don't understand what a grind the football season is. They don't. They don't. I mean, I mean it, it starts really back, in, back in, in spring camp and then lifting during the summer and conditioning. And, God, guys, it's been so hot. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it, it's a grind. That, that's what separates you from other teams right there. If you can push through the adversity, that, I mean, you know, in week one against Southside, we had adversity. I mean, we went down with a lot of cramps. Um, you know, that the heat the heat is going to get to you, but it's a way you find out, a way to get through, and that's what makes the difference between you and other teams, you know, pushing. And that's what that senior class at, uh, at Lincoln, that's what we want to do. We want to be leaders and be and show other our younger classmen how to push through, push through the tough adversity, push through the heat, push through all the injuries, you know what I'm saying? And that's what Coach Z has been pushing. Been pushing. 
Javion, I think the one luxury you guys don't have this year that maybe you had last year is – you got to sneak up on some people last year because, you know, you were a one and nine team the year before. Yes, sir. Last year, you turned that around. You win the region championship. You don't get a hall pass this year. You know, <laughs> yes, Hanley's going to see you coming. Talladega's going to see you coming. Uh, Holtville's going to see you coming. So, you're going to you're gonna have to have to be at your best every every region game. And you're certainly going to have to to do your thing at the home at these home games. And and there's a lot of changes in the region. We talked we talked with 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 uh, Coach Z about it. I mean, you got a new coach at Talladega and Coach Felder. Yes, you got Coach Hood who's taken over at Leeds. Leeds has always had athletes. Talladega's got athletes. Uh, you got Hanley that looks like they're going to be solid this year. Yes. I mean, this region is. I mean, it's going to take a, a a big effort every yeah. every game. To come out of there with the title this year. Yes, sir. We got to just stay ahead of the game. And like, like you said, they got film on us, film on us this year that they didn't have last year. So the game is gonna be, you know, it's gonna get tougher. But as Cam said, it's adversity. You got to push through it. I like your offensive makeup at, at, at Lincoln. I mean, this guy over here. He can throw it all over the place. And if the receivers are covered, he can pull it down and run it and get you 15 or 20. Yeah, he can. You know, or, or, you know, even break it open. Yes, sir. So it seems to me for Lincoln to to really achieve, y'all are going to get your points, I think. Yes, sir. It's the defensive side of the ball where I yeah. think you guys are really going to have to stand up and shut some people down. And, you know, make make it where 21 or 28 points is enough to win the game. Well, um, yeah, like like on offense, I mean, on defense, man, we have playmakers all over the field. we got a great outside linebacker, number two, Trey Garrett. I mean, we got a good linebacker in the middle, number four, Keyshawn Townsend. And our D-line is very, is very good. I'm, like I said, we didn't play good against Weber, but don't underestimate us. we got a very good defense. And, um, you like you said, we're going to have to stop people out. I mean, Tyler Digger has a high-powered offense. Leeds has a high-powered offense. They've scored 30 some points in the last two games. Yep. So, I mean, at com we know coming into this region play, and as we come up on region play, we've been focusing on tackling, making sure we're wrapping up. I mean, we're going to have to tackle it and be nasty and, and shut people out. That's that's the reason. The, that's the way we're going to win this region. Like you said, last year we did a very good job of that, and I think that uh, that can carry on to this year. Okay. Well, listen, guys. I hope you enjoyed your supper. It was good to see both of you, and we will see you Friday night with cameras in hand, ready yes, to sir. show it to the world. Yes, you're sir. Gonna, you're gonna, hey, how many touchdowns are you going to get for me Friday night? I don't know, but I'm going to put up a lot, though. You're going to do enough? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. all right. JV on Searles, Cam Reynolds, two really good guys from the Lincoln Golden Bears, and we have enjoyed having them here, and we will see them again Friday night. And there you see it on your screen, the FNN Game of the Week. The Leeds Green Wave at the Lincoln Golden Bears. Sir Pro Countdown to kickoff gets us started at 6.30. We'll be back. We'll get Grady back over here, I think, and Joe Medley from the Aniston Star to talk about last week's games and set up this Friday night's matchups when we continue from Struts in Oxford here on the Friday Night Network. Banking local matters. When you keep your money here, it stays in the community to support local businesses and schools and farms. At First Bank of Alabama, we've been serving this area for more than 160 years. We care about our community and the people who live here. So when you bank here, you make being here better for all of us. First Bank of Alabama, the official bank of here. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Dave Mack for Advantage Tire on Highway 202 in Anniston. Most of you know about the new and used tires and rims we sell. But I bet there's a lot of things we do that you don't know about. We have a full lineup of ASE certified mechanics that are ready to take care of just about everything you can imagine, like this. He's working on a brake job right here. At Advantage Tire, we've got the latest diagnostic tools. These are all digital. This is wireless. Most people have a wired, we got wireless. But on top of that, when it comes to diagnostics, we still handle your alignment with the latest technology available. And don't forget, we do shocks and struts too. So the next time this happens to you, you know where to go. Advantage Tire, Highway 202 Aniston.
Hey, this is Coach Chris from Professional Apothecary, and we're your hometown team. We take care of all your pharmacy and medical equipment needs. When it comes to medical supplies, the team at Professional Apothecary has the winning game plan. Everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and doctor comfort shoes. And we have all of your over-the-counter needs. Come see us at Professional Apothecary. Located on North Street, just off the square, on Facebook and online at ProAPO.com. This box is open for us, Coach. Welcome and, back and here to the uh, FNN Tuesday Night High School Football Coaches Show. Live from Struts in Oxford, I, I reappeared. <laughs> I've been hiding out over at the bar with Both Joe. of you. Both of you. It's like you've been over at the bar drinking or something. <laughs> well, doing nothing but tea right there. <laughs> uh, oh, welcome back to Struts. Glad to have everybody with us here on this Tuesday night as we get ready for week three already of the high school football season. Before we get into uh, talking with Joe here from the uh, – Aniston Star about the games from this past week and this Friday night. Let me uh, mention a couple of things real quick. This is already here. Uh, it is our football foldout. This is something new we've done this year. It's got a, uh, two or three really good articles in it. I've read Joe's stuff, and I've basically learned how to write a little bit along the way. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, of course, the uh, in the center of the piece is the weekly schedule for the entire season week by week, mm -hmm. for over 60 teams in our area. These are free. They're all over the place. There you see the locations on the screen. Well, you got free. yours. Yeah. You got yours, so there you go. And, and of course, also I want to mention real quick, because these are almost gone. These are our uh, regular scheduled posters that we do every year. It has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six times four is 24, right? 24, yeah. 24 area teams from in, in the immediate area, and there you see on the screen where you can get these. Please go by these locations and get them while you can. Don't call me in October wanting one because I promise you I will not have one. They are, they are going really that quick. In fact, I don't think we have another case of these at the office. So wow. they, they are really moving out the door. So you see there on the screen all the locations, and uh, that information is available on our website as well in case you miss it there on the screen. Uh, go by and pick them up. Both of these publications are free from the Friday Night Network. It's just our way to give a little something back during high school football season. And speaking of high school football season, let's get back to this past Friday night. You were up at uh, Pleasant Valley with us. Uh, were you as impressed with Piedmont as we were? I was, uh, mainly because I saw a different look out of Piedmont. You, you don't see, I don't recall seeing that much four wide mm -hmm. in a game with Piedmont. And and I think with some of that was, you know, they, they, they're, they're running games of work in progress right now. Yeah. And, and I think uh, they, they, they wanted to show, I think, that they could do what they did. It, it, it maybe helps their running game down the road, but uh, but it re it was reminiscent to me of of you know Taylor Hayes <laughs> in the uh, in the uh, 2016 semifinal against Ohachi. Ohachi kind of dared them to throw the ball, and he threw five touchdown passes that night. And then little brother Jack does you know throws four in that game against Pleasant Valley, and and you know and it wasn't just like a, a high school passing game, you know where where they throw the quick screen to the best athlete and let him try to break tackles. I mean it, it was quick screens it, it was slants it was seams it was downfield passes and and a bunch of different guys catching the ball and it looked, well, it looked well done what i told grady impressed me the most was the the passes he threw to receivers coming back up the sidelines yes. mm -hmm. i mean you know a ninth grader don't make that play i mean they just don't i mean that to me that shows that piedmont's going to have a very very good quarterback for the next four years yeah, and and you know he may turn out to be one of their best running plays, just tucking and running. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you know, if if he spread it out and give him that opportunity, uh, you know, I, I think you know he, he's got a, <laughs> he's got that last name. I, he can do. Yeah, I was impressed with Joe. With the, I told Jim this earlier with the fact that he's got great speed. I mean, he can hit the hole and, and get in the open field, and he is a dangerous runner in the open field. And strong. But he also has that physicality to lower the shoulder and get a yard if you need fourth and a yard. I'd feel pretty good about having the ball in his hands. Yeah, and, and Elijah Johnson's a pretty big kid, too. I, yes. I, I think he can get in there and get tough yards, too, especially, again, if they're able to spread a defense out like right. that. And, you know, if they put them out four wide against Randolph County, Randolph County's got to account for that because they've shown they can execute it. And defensively, Joe, they shut down a pretty good running game. I mean, mm -hmm. Pleasant Valley had no answer for, for the Piedmont defense. Yeah, and, you know, I, they, they didn't have a lot of speed on the outside to do something else. 
And, and I think that, you know, that Piedmont's good up front. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Sean Smith's a pretty darn good player. Yeah. And, and, and Bryson Ingram's a pretty darn good player, too. Well, let's talk about the Welburn Panthers. They rolled, steamrolled Weaver. We've seen them uh, putting a lot of points on the board on uh, a lot of, uh, uh, well, everybody they've played so far. 149 in three games. Yes. Yep. Impressive uh, start for the Panthers. Yeah, and, you know, they, they've got weapons all over the place. You know, they, they can spread the ball around. They've got that one guy, obviously, in Jet Smith that can, that can make it happen for them, but they've got guys all around that can make things happen. So, and, and, and they've just they physically matured. I mean, they, they've kind of went with these guys a couple of years ago, let them take their lumps, and now they physically matured, and, and they're, you know, they're, they're solid. Now, I think yeah, – I, I don't think it's fair to say that Welburn hasn't been tested yet because you would think a 4A playoff team like Lincoln is a test. Yeah, against absolutely. It's the 3A team. And, and, Especially on the road. Right. And, you know, they put up 61 that night. <laughs> That's their biggest number so far. Yeah. Uh, but um, – you know, this week obviously they play sacks and and Jonathan Miller's coach. He's calling the offense this year, but you know his hands in the defense and and he's always traditionally been a very good defensive coach. It'll be interesting to see if he can find something to do. You know, to do about it. You know, last year this game was 42-13, team team in red and white. Mm-hmm. So they ha- seem like a team to me, Joe. That it's like they've caught a cold. And they can't shake it, you know. And it, and it started really at the end of last year when Torrey's went out. And then he's come back in for a little bit in two games. And now it's my understanding he may be done for the year. I've, I've tried to get confirmation on that and haven't heard back yet. But, uh, but you know, he obviously, you know, he was averaging 15 yards a carry. Right. Yeah. And then went out. And it made a big, a big difference in their offense. So, yeah, that was the cold. And then Jonathan Cobb graduates. Mario right. Thomas graduates. Jalen Childs graduates, so that's a full-on flu. Yes, it is. Yeah. And then a couple of kids transfer to Aniston, and so you know, Jonathan Miller's had to come up with some solutions, and you know, here they are, two and one, and and he's got his 70th win at Sacks, which ties the school record, and 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 did it in four years fewer than Jack Stewart did it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, well, I mean, there's no there's no question that that Coach Miller's one of the area's best. I mean, I mean, you can't question that. The, the proofs in, in the paper, but. Uh, I'm a little concerned that Comer was able to hang as many points on them as they were this past week in the, in the game down in Sylacauga. And and I I, I, I got to tell you, I, I like Welburn going into that game Friday night. Well, again, they, they, they've shown they can score points. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and Lincoln, you would think, would have been their biggest challenge that way. And may, maybe the reason they put up that number against Lincoln was Lincoln was the, the team that could make it their yeah. starter stay on the field for four quarters. Yeah. Well, do we, do we see a team, the team that comes out of this one, Welburn or Sachs, whichever one wins this one, uh, they have to be the team that you kind of stick up there to be in contention with Piedmont and Randolph County in that region for the first and second spots. Oh, I think so. And uh, and, and I, I think coming into preseason, you kind of look at it that way. Mm-hmm. And you do we do we learn anything about Randolph County when they go to Piedmont Friday night? I mean, obviously, if they win the game, we do. But if Piedmont, you know, wins like they normally do at home, because, I mean, the last four times they played during the regular season, Piedmont's won the football game. Mm-hmm. So, the, you know, the Bulldogs have got to be the favorite. Yes. Uh, I mean, oh, I, no field of champions, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it being there and, 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 all, and, and all of that stuff. And, you know, what Piedmont did last week only had to give them more confidence. Yeah, and, you know, Steve Smith showed a card there, and I think he wanted to show that card. Uh, Randolph County hasn't played anybody yet that makes them show their cards. Yeah, the, the, the scores against Nota Solga and, and, uh, and uh, Glencoe, you know, we're not what you would think they would be, mm-hmm. but I don't know that necessarily means anything. I, I think, I think, you know, he's saving his card for Piedmont, and 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 those games have been good games the last few times they played. And oh yeah, uh, I, I suspect that it'll be a good game. Yeah, I, I got a feeling it's going to be a good one, but I like Piedmont. Uh, it it may be close, but I, I like I like the Bulldogs. Oh, I I would definitely pick yeah. them at home, and yeah. especially after what they showed last week. Yeah, no doubt about that. How good is Aniston? Uh, you know, I saw them play Catholic Montgomery, which is the number four team in the state, and you know that game came down to a, a bad snap on an extra point, uh, 14-13, mm-hmm. and, and I felt like they were a vastly improved team. Uh, looking at them on the field, I talked to Catholic Montgomery's coach. They played them last year. Uh, he felt like they were vastly improved, both in, in especially depth and numbers. And, and and then they go to Cherokee County, which had beaten St. Clair County the week before, 42-7, to and pretty much dismantled them. Yeah. So, so I, they've got the athletes, and – uh, you know, do, do, are, are we ready to say yet that they're ready to challenge Hoax Bluff and Jacksonville in that region? Yeah, I think it could be. 
Yeah. It, it, well, and that was going to be my next question for you. Has Aniana got anything for Hoax Bluff at their place this week, you think? You know, it, they're a hard team to get a read on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, uh, they, 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 some games they can look really good. And other team, you know, like last year, they pushed Jacksonville to the limit. Yeah. Uh, and then, but I think did, didn't Aniston beat them pretty bad last year? <laughs> so I, I mean, and that, and that wasn't you know Aniston's a better team this year than they were last year. So um, it, it's hard to get a read on them, and and they're they're kind of one of those wild card teams. Well, let's yeah. talk about Jacksonville uh, a little bit. You you just mentioned them, and of course we had them a couple of weeks ago. Saw Alexandria pretty well push them around on um, push their defense around and run at will. They bounced back nicely last week against the Nashville team that we expected them to beat. Where do you think this team is in, in terms of the Golden Eagles? I, you know, I, I don't uh, – I, I, the Alexandria game to me doesn't tell me that Jacksonville's lost something. I, I think Alexandria's just gained something. I, I think they're a better team than people thought they were. And, uh, you know, it, and where where Jacksonville did lose was up front, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it so, was, yeah. And, and, you know, Alexandria is one of those teams that can make that hurt. <laughs> but I, I still think Jacksonville's got the athletes. I, I still think – you know, especially in that region, you know, and this is a stat we keep quoting, but uh, you know, they've never lost to Hoax Bluff in, in, in Clint Smith's tenure at Jacksonville. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> and, good. And there, there must be something to that matchup. You know, there must be something to the way, you know, one program does their thing and the other one does their thing that, that makes it come out that way the, time and time again. So, you know, until somebody else in that region shows me they can beat them, I, 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 think, I think they're still the team. Yeah. I got to tell you, though, we saw we saw Hoax Bluff in person against Southside, and they they look mid season form. Great, they did first week. They yeah. looked like I mean, they, they really they did. Really good. And it's not is it's not just Meads. I mean, no. uh, you know, Gulledge at quarterback looked really good. Yeah, looked really good. He he's a weapon in his own right. They may not be able to throw the ball quite as well as they did last year, but they can sure run it. The one concern maybe that they might have might be the secondary, and and from what I saw of them, that might be where somebody would try to exploit their defense. That's the only place. You're not going to run the ball very effectively on them, I don't think. So they're yeah. strong. But I, I guess Jacksonville, Hoax Bluff, and maybe Aniston. We'll see if they're a team that's a threat in that region coming well, up. That, yeah. that Aniston-Jacksonville yep. game at, at, at Lot Mosby That'll is going to be, be big. Yes, yeah, it is. You know, that was a game. You know, Jacksonville put up 40 last year, and, and mm-hmm. that, you know, Aniston's defense is going to remember that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No question. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's jump over and talk a little 6A. Oxford, I mean, it's been a good start to the season. We were talking early, though. <laughs> you know, it's you look till next week. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of the measuring stick when, when they go to Pinson Valley. But. Nothing, nothing matters till yeah. September 20th. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, and and you know, the teams they played so far, are teams they should beat, they've beaten them handily. Mm-hmm. What, what I like about Oxford's game, though, is is just the different ways that they're scoring and they're getting everybody involved. You know, it, it's not. You, you don't come in to Oxford this year thinking, okay, stop Ty Smith Lindsay, and you make things really hard for Oxford. <clears throat> and I, I, they've got a lot of ways they can beat you. And um, I, I'll see how that that plays out. Obviously, when they play Pennsylvania Valley and play Chalkville, but that's kind of the measuring stick. That's 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 been the whole theme. But uh, but I, I think I, I I think Oxford might win at least one of those two games this year. Yeah, I, li- I, I like that too. I do. I do too. I was going to ask you though, of the two, which one do you think they have the best chance of winning? Because I may surprise you with my pick. You know, abs. I've not seen them. I, I I don't know what Clay Chalkfield and Pennsylvania Valley look like after after whatever they lost from last year. We know what Pennsylvania Valley lost at quarterback. Yeah. And and that's uh, <clears throat> that was a big difference in who they were last year. So uh, we'll we'll see. But I I you know. Again, Ryan Herring, when he left here, said that this, this is maybe the fastest team Oxford's had in years, and um, and when you know if the other teams drop back a little bit, I think Oxford's primed to pass. Who do you pick? Who do you think the one? They're going to I, I think they've got a better chance to beat Pinson Valley than they do Clay. I Chalkle. didn't answer your question, did I? No, you, no, didn't. you didn't. You danced around it yeah, quite he, nicely. He danced actually. around it yeah. very nicely. Yeah, yeah. yeah he sure did. <laughs> yeah, and and, and Pinson you know, Valley, that'd be my answer. Huh? Pinson Valley would be my answer. Yeah, right, so so we agree. <laughs> We hadn't talked about Ohachi. Oh. Is there anything in their way between them and Fife? I, I'm not sure what it is, yeah. <laughs> to be to be honest with you. I mean, I thought maybe Ranburn, maybe Westbrook could give them a little bit of a game. But, I mean, they just seem to be so laser-focused and, and prepared for that rematch. Yeah, you know, and Ranburn's done well so far. I mean, yeah. They, oh, yeah, they, they, they look been, good. They've impressed so far. And, you know, when I, when I saw them back at the Piedmont 7-on-7, seven seven, you know, he was he was worried about, you know, he's got a quarterback that can throw it now, but he was worried about finding people who could catch it. Well, it looks like they found people who could catch it because they're scoring <laughs> points. 
And so, you know, it, it's kind of building up to that showdown again in the region. And But, you know, last year it was 28 nothing. And this time this time it's over at Ranburg. Yep. So, yeah. you know. And that's going to make a difference. Don't think they're not going to remember last year. Well, sure they are. But yeah. Ohatchee's just – they uh, are. They're, they, they're a program. They're not. Yes, they're not. I agree. Just, you know, they just come at you, and as long as you you've got the tools in place, and they're going to have it with Coach Martin there, they're they're going to be it every year. And the thing, you know, the wild card obviously is injuries, but are are you going to get them injured when you're not making their starters play in the second half most of the year? <laughs> not so. most of the time, no. And you know, you got to give Scott Martin a little bit of credit for having the guts to do that. I mean, yeah. j- just to, to to because you know, there's a lot of kids, Joe. In, in today's me, me, me world that would not respond well to that. But he seems to have that process that manages that with his kids. Yeah. You know, that it, it's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, not, not every – I mean, a lot of kids this day want to spread it around and throw it all the time, right? Yeah. But, but, but he, he could tell early on that his athletes, the kind of kids he has there at Ohachi, need to be doing something different. I mean, his background was in the spread. Yeah, and, and and he's t- done something totally different there in Ohatchee, which I think speaks to him as a coach, and and they've bought into it, and and dang, they're hard to stop. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> and uh, you know, we, we we talk a lot about you know Ron Wiggins and and Darian Meads, but you got to put Dominique. Dominique Thomas in that conversation. I mean, he he's just he's a special kid. You, you know, it seems like we've been we've been running back rich here in the county for yep, for yep. a while now, and some some kids graduated that finally brought him more into focus, and 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 he, and he deserves that focus. And, and Lord knows what would his numbers be if he was playing in the second half of most mm-hmm. of these yeah. games. Really, right? And I I have said another thing we're rich in this area with is venues to go to do a high school game in the Creek Bank at Ohatchee is one of my favorite yes. places to yep. go. The atmosphere is fantastic. And uh, when are we going? That's got to be the loudest darn PA in the world. It is loud. I mean, I don't, I don't know when they bought a new amp for that thing, but, jeez, it's well, loud. Well, Steve Taylor, he's just loud anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, where are you headed Friday? I mean, I guess you're going to Piedmont, huh? No, Welburn Sachs. I, I, oh, I saw Piedmont last week. That's I, right. I, so I'm you're going to go see Welburn and Sachs. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I think you're going to see the Panthers roll, but if not, Jonathan Miller's done the best sandbagging job I've <laughs> yeah. seen in a while. <laughs> <laughs> I expect text with updates, by the way. Oh, of course. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, we will be well, over follow, in if Talladega. You follow me at jmedley underscore star. It'll be. It'll all okay. be there. Okay. Good deal. <laughs> we got it. All right. Uh, well, we will be over in Talladega County in the north end of the, of the woods at uh, Lincoln for the uh, Leeds Green Wave and the Lincoln Golden Bears, and we think that's got the makings of a pretty good football game to kick off region play for Lincoln, the defending 4A. What is it? Region. Six? Uh, six or seven. I can't uh, remember. I think it's six. Yeah. The region six. Oh, it's four. We're both Re- yeah, that's right. Four. Yeah, four. Yeah. Region four. Uh, uh, now, Leeds has already got a, a region win. Yeah. They beat Elmore County yeah. last week. So, uh, and you know. The real question is how, how does Lincoln bounce back from the loss to, to Welburn? Because they really, they got beat at home. And a lot of points hung on them, and, and that's going to be something I'm interested to see Friday night. Yeah, Co- right. Coach Zaydecker said defense has been a focus. I can imagine. Yep, and, right. they, and they bounced back from that game last year and yeah. made the playoffs. So. Yes, they did, yep. and won the region. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight, Joe. Hope you enjoyed the egg rolls. I did. Glad good, you could make it in. I'm, and, and, I'm, and I'm just as thrilled as I can be that you found your keys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, and that's all the story we're going to tell. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, big-time newspaper guy loses his keys. keys. Yeah. <laughs> I, in my defense, I had some help. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. We will see you Friday night from Leeds starting at 630 with the Sir Pro Countdown to kick off. For Grady Sapp, for Joe Medley, Jake behind the computer across the way, I'm Jim Jacobs. Thanks for joining us for the Tuesday Night High School Football Coaches Show here at Struts. We'll see you next week.